How's it going, ladies and gents? It's Flack. Project time! This was a very expensive, from what I remember, uh, Asus headset. This is a 7.1 surround sound gaming headset. And it's not like your typical surround sound gaming headset using software. No, this has discrete drivers for each uh, channel. Um, problem is... Yeah, the uh, hinge broke on the left ear cup because the wires are inside this like little uh, spacer and that little spacer was attached to this very thin, very cheap plastic. Let's see if we can design it in FreeCAD and print it and then get this headset back to working order. All right, I had uh, snipped this little plastic bracket. Uh, next thing to do is to take the that strange little spacer and i'm gonna have to cut it and cutting that was like rocket surgery it was a little nerve-wracking i don't want to damage these wires now oh, it's a crappy picture however you can see where it has this this rubber sleeve that goes in this little uh hinge socket thingamajig yeah, I'm not really impressed so far with this headset. I remember using it and it squeaked a lot, it rattled a lot. It was a good headset, it sounded good. Um, but yeah, I just think the build quality is absolutely terrible on this thing. Since this was the first uh, model I tried to make in FreeCAD, uh, I didn't really document much. I was still toying around with it. But I've also made some uh, engineering drawings on this part I'm trying to replicate. And now you're gonna see a couple clips of FreeCAD and I'll show you the failures and bits and pieces that I have printed so far. That might have been the shortest uh, compilation ever. <laughs> I didn't record much. It was mostly me learning FreeCAD, uh, which I'll get to a little bit later on in this video. So yeah, I've completely disassembled the headset, and I've been trying to reverse engineer this part. I've been also comparing it to the other side, which is right here, which is not broken, not yet at least. I'm probably going to replace that one as well. I have done a lot of experiments. This is one of the first where I decided to print at a one millimeter uh, nozzle. And it prints lightning quick. And this is PLA and carbon fiber PLA. And it's quite strong and incredibly uh, clog prone. That took quite a bit of force to break. I've also printed in PET-G, uh, which is so much stronger than the PLA. And this is carbon fiber PLA, so it is, it is incredibly strong. But these are the most of my scraps. I think there's a couple, like, supports missing and such. But yes, that, that's, that's about it. The way I try to keep waste... To a minimum. This rotating hinge part was a bit of a pain in the butt to model uh, because I had to pad multiple layers, uh, in fact three layers. The good thing about that is I was able to constantly adjust this. In fact, I, I had this to one point where it was absolutely huge. Yeah, go big or go home. Yeah, that that's, that's way too big. But our final part I'm going to print right now because I've touched it up a bit and then we'll go from there. All right, I've started this print. I'm actually doing a time lapse of it right now. 0.4 millimeter nozzle. We are printing with PETG at a 100% infill. I want this part to be completely solid. All right, support. I changed support settings a little bit. I 
lower the support density to 5%. The other thing I do change is the support Z distance. The support distance I just uh, add another 5 to, just a little bit so that way it's a little easier to remove the supports. No build plate adhesion. And we'll be printing with 9 grams of filament at 2.57 meters and it'll take approximately an hour and 20 minutes. All right, let's see if this comes off nice. Well, it came off easy. I was kind of hoping the supports would stay. Oh, but those supports are incredibly easy to remove. Here's the finished model. The pins are ever so slightly too f uh, far apart. And the rest of the model, I mean, it's not gonna, it doesn't have the detail that the original part has. But it's a close enough part where I think I can get this finally fitted and working. And now I wanted to say later in this video, I would love to just make this entire thing in FreeCAD. I use Tinkercad to add some uh, the pins and the holes. But I would really like to do that all in FreeCAD. I don't don't know how, and we'll continue to practice. But hopefully, we can get this part sanded and cleaned up, so that way it will work with the headset. So, anyways, guys, thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more. Oh, that's satisfying.